Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be going over the AP Physics 1 exam review for energy. So yeah, let's just get right into it. So the first thing I want to touch upon is the types of energy. So the first energy that we have is gravitational potential energy, right? So gravitational potential energy is going to be independent of motion. And it's also based on the object's position in the gravitational field. So what exactly does that mean? Well, the important thing here is to identify the um, what we call the horizontal zero line. So if I have this guy on a cliff, right, and I use um, MGH, which is the equation for gravitational potential energy, I can call that base of the cliff, the ground, y equals zero. So when I do my calculation, MGH, that height is just going to be the height of the cliff. Um, but let's say I'm on an airplane, right? That height, if I was to identify the horizontal zero line as the ground, then that height would be thousands of feet, right? However, if I identify the horizontal zero line um, as y equals zero in respect to all motion, um, then that height is going to be much, much lower. And so my gravitational potential energy is going to be much lower as well. So the next type of energy is kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is just the energy of motion. And you can see this through translational or linear kinetic energy or rotational kinetic energy. And the final one is spring potential energy. So that's just potential energy um, that is stored in a spring. And there are other ones like electrical energy, but those aren't really relevant for calculations in this course. All right, so now let's talk about conservation of energy. When there's no external forces acting upon objects in a system, that is where energy is conserved. So energy initial equals energy final. All right, so here's an equation that represents that. And this is where there's non-conservative forces um, that are acting upon it, right? So we're gonna have something like air resistance or friction, which is gonna be represented as work other. So kinetic initial plus U, uh, which is potential energy initial, uh, plus work equals kinetic final plus potential energy final. And uh, something important to point out here is that it could just start off with all gravitational potential energy if it's, say, like a ball released from a, a cliff or something um, from rest. So that can always change. But the point here is that energy can't be created and will always take other types of forms. And that is where you have to represent them uh, using these equations. All right, so now let's talk about the concept of work. So work is just change in energy. It has the units of joules or newton meters, and it's equivalent to the force parallel times displacement. And the displacement can both be either vertical or horizontal. Um, so something to know about work is that work can both be positive or negative depending on the directions of the force in displacement. So what I mean by parallel is that if the force is parallel to the displacement and they are in the same direction, there will be positive work. Now, if the force is parallel, uh, but in the opposite direction of that displacement, then it's going to be negative work because it's going to be acting against it. All right. And the graph of force times displacement is equivalent to work. Um, and that can be easily seen through um, that equation where the values are multiplied. Okay, so now let's talk about work at an angle, because when you have work, um, say you have a box or something and you, you're you pulling it um, with, a, with a rope or a string or something, that work is not going to be evenly distributed. So that entire force is going to be acting on, in components, and that's a big part of physics where you have to observe things from a component perspective. Uh, but now the equation changes slightly. So now instead of work equals uh, force parallel times displacement, you're going to have work equals force times displacement times cosine theta, all right? So here is a pretty uh, nice chart which lays everything out. So when that cosine theta, when theta is in between 0 and 90 degrees, you're going to get positive value for cosine theta. And that also means you're going to have positive work, which means the speed of the object is going to be increasing, right? Because work is change in energy. So if your change in energy is increasing, that means you have more kinetic energy. Um, when theta is 90 degrees, that means cosine theta is zero, which means you're going to have zero work. And so the speed of the object is constant. 
So when theta is in between 90 and 180 degrees, you're going to get a negative value for cosine theta, and therefore you're going to get negative work. And so that means a decrease in the amount of energy, which means a, a decrease in speed as well now. All right, so the final thing we want to touch upon is springs, and then we'll get to power. Uh, so for springs, there's two things you want to know, and that is Hooke's Law and the uh, spring potential energy equation. So Hooke's Law um, is states that the force on the spring is equivalent to the spring constant, which is a constant force, and it's just a measure of how strong the spring is, times the change in length uh, from the equilibrium position. So that is when it's not stretched. Um, something to note here is that when it's osculating in simple harmonic motion or something, um, if it's the restoring force, it's going to be negative kx instead of just kx. Um, because if you think about it, um, I should draw this out. So if you have, let's say this, and then you have the spring here, and there's a ball attached to the end. So once it reaches its maximum displacement, there needs to be a force which acts uh, in the negative direction here to get that uh, ball to go back and osculate and go through its equilibrium position again. So if we observe that chart or the graph of force over uh, change in length from the equilibrium position, that is gonna be equivalent to uh, K, the spring constant which is the slope. But like we talked about before, the area of force over displacement is work. And in this case, we have force over displacement, displacement from the equilibrium position. And so we know that the area of this uh, graph is also the change in energy, right? And so when you find this change in energy, a lot of times what you'll do is then plug that in for spring potential energy. So when you work with Hooke's law, think springs, think spring potential energy. Um, so that's something just to keep in mind. So the final thing here is power. So power is just how quickly does work happen? And power is represented by the change in energy over change in time. And that one equation will probably serve you well, but there is another way of thinking about it. So since change in energy, we know on the reference table, it's given as force times displacement, right? So if in our power equation, we just we just substitute change in energy for um, force times displacement. Now we have power equals force times displacement over time. Now we know that d over t, or displacement over time, is just the velocity, right? So that's just force times velocity, right? Because d over t is the velocity. And so power is also equivalent to force times velocity. All right, so that does it for today's uh, review of energy for the AP Physics 1 exam. If you guys learned something, make sure you subscribe. And if you have a question, drop it down below. And thank you for watching.